Hello and welcome to Sunday Papers, Sunday Papers, Sunday Papers, Sunday Papers. My name's Jason. <laughs> that was rubbish, wasn't it? My name is Jason, Jason Newland. This is Let Me Boy to Sleep. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. There's a fair bit of screaming in the garden. So I hopefully you won't be disturbed by that. I was going to say more importantly, I won't be disturbed by it. But I guess it's more important that you're not disturbed by it. But personally, I'd rather not be disturbed by it. Because it distracts me a little bit. And I've been so quiet all week is kind of you know his kids playing I, I can't begrudge that at all it's just um, it makes it a little bit harder that's all I mean I could put earplugs in but that's not going to help you is it <laughs> um, so yeah my website's jasonnewland.com all my recordings are on there Every time I do a new recording, I upload six versions now. And to the podcasts, one without music, five hours and ten hours without music, one with music, and then five and ten hours with music. Uh, so you can stream those. You can go to my website. You can also download all of those podcasts at the same time. Um, I've also got all my back catalogue on there as well. And I have a Facebook page if you'd like to become part of our little group. Uh, it's Jason Newland's Boring Group. So yeah, hope you're well. I uh, watched the boxing last night. It was uh, it was a bit tainted. I think this is a bit weird, weird thing to kind of um, open up with, but... I was kind of looking forward to watching a boxing and you know I took I took this the little one out took Vinny you know to the park like normal did make do a wee wee or a poo poo or whatever before I think I don't know if the boxing had already started or not I can't remember but there was these, they probably would have done because, yeah, I would, probably before the boxing started because it's starting to get darker earlier now. Oh, it stopped sighing. Anyway, there was these two, well, I guess they were females, couldn't really see, but they were on the other side of the park shout, shouting out perv to me. Honestly, I could like, what? I don't know if they were drunk or, but it wasn't, it wasn't a very comfortable experience, if I'm honest with you. And it's just, it felt a little bit dangerous. Because, like, what? Why? 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 <laughs> I, I, I was, I was just checked, I was wearing trousers. So there wasn't any reason for it that I could understand. So, uh, I shot them. So, okay, right, so it's, uh, Sunday papers. Yeah, well, I didn't enjoy that, you know. Just never had that happen before. Never had sort of young people shout and stuff out at me because that's bullying, isn't it, basically? And they're just like, really? You. you know, if it was an adult. I could kind of deal with it a lot easier, but because it's a a child, it's like I can't. What can I do? Huh. Never mind. Hopefully, it won't happen again. I hope. But I was all I was doing was just walk, taking. I want to take. I want to say the word, uh, walking, in case he thinks it's time to go for a walk, but. He didn't even move. Oh, he did. His ears went up then. Very delayed reaction there. 
so yeah that was weird but anyway let's move in on oh the boxing last night how can so many such few people make so much noise so I'm reading the newspapers but I'm using my phone which means everything's very tiny I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it I mean hopefully because I normally have the iPad but because Vinny's cuddled up to me I kind of don't want to I don't want to let him go. So, uh, yeah. I want him to cuddle me. Because as soon as I move, he'll get up. So, what's the... F I'm going to read the people to start with. This is a Sunday people. Page three. Taylor made double date. Okay, this is it. This is important news. Let's have a look. What is this? Let's see if I can turn it down... Single page view. Single page view. Oh, that's it. Okay. No, it won't let me open it up. So I have to have it. When you're one of the most famous women in the world, you can't just pop out for a quiet meal with your mates. But Taylor Swift, 34, and her American football player, boyfriend, Travis Keese, Kels, Kelk, 35, embraced the chaos as they headed out for dinner with her longtime pal, actress Blake Lively, 37. They love saying the ages. And her Deadpool star husband, Ryan Reynolds, 47. Blimey, he's 47, didn't know that. Um, the A-listers were mobbed by fans clutching camera phones as they met in North in New York. Although how much food Taylor would have been able to eat while wearing a corset is anyone's guess. So, I don't know, is it, is it corset, is it restrictive, a corset? And I'm looking at it. I don't. I don't want to look at what she's wearing, but because it's mentioned that, I'm going to. I'm going to be very, very inspective. And it doesn't. It doesn't look like a tight corset. At the front of it looks like a corset, but it doesn't, because corsets like they tie up at the back, don't they? And I imagine very restrictive. I imagine. I know they are. Um, well that was nice the next story is Boris Johnson the headlines gutted Boris beaten by cookbook <gasps> Boris Johnson's hopes of having a bestseller have been dashed by a guide to cooking for good gut health so for those that don't know who Boris Johnson is is he used to be a prime minister in this here country of mine uh, for a while and apparently I think his book is it says here a huge his number 10 memoir quickly slid from the first to seventh on Amazon's bestseller list losing out to the gut healthy recipe guide and even a children's picture book about a penguin <laughs> a source said clearly people are more interested in their grub and cartoon penguins than they are in reliving Johnson's political blunderings uh, to be fair they normally get a big advance from my memory of former prime ministers when they retire or you know they they lose their job as pm they usually get a huge book deal to tell their story and you know give you all the goss and stuff um 
he was given, I mean, it says here, 510,000 pounds advance for his book. But he will still have to be, which is just, wow. Liz Truss's book, 10 Years to Save the West, which was her memoirs of being a prime minister for six weeks or whatever it was. It had 2,238 sales in the UK in its first week. <laughs> so, I mean, that's not a lot when you think, you know, how famous these people are. I mean, if I wrote a book, I'm pretty sure I could... I could probably sell five, at least five copies in the first year, I reckon. Yeah. My time as a Prime Minister. Ooh, no, 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 no. Okay, right. This is weird, using the phone to do this. Ironically, they're not promoting the book in the paper, but they are promoting Yorkshire Vet. Life of a Yorkshire Vet, as seen on TV. And it's got a bloke cuddling a lamb. <sighs> okay... Um, so this is quite interesting news I don't normally talk about diseases and stuff like that but you know it's it's quite important uh, for any men listening this is and I don't know I don't I just I don't know the truth of anything that I read in the newspapers I'm not going to fact check anything just I'll put that out there, but this is what I'm reading in the paper. Uh, I don't know if you know that recently I got my prostate tested. Um, not in the old-fashioned way. Nothing, no, nothing fun. Just uh, from a blood test, and because it's in my family, like really prevalent in my family on my dad's side. So, I kind of, my dad said, you have to get tested. And I'm like, oh, okay. I put it off for a few months. Because, well, partly, I wanted to find a doctor, you know, that was going to test me. Someone that I just enjoyed spending time with first, you know. See if we could build a relationship. But then when I found out I could do it by a blood test, which ironically... About four, eight years ago, when both of my uncles had it, the, the prostate stuff, both of them had it. I went to my doctor and I said, um, I think I need to get tested because this is a little bit, you know, this, you know, this is just like maybe something I need to sort of get tested on. Uh, and she said, well, I'm not doing it. And that was it. So she didn't seem very... Uh, I mean, I wasn't I wasn't asking her, oh, can you please, you know, think... No, I, was, yeah, I wasn't asking her to, you know, do anything. I just like... It seemed like quite an important thing to bring up. And then probably a couple of years later or a year later, Stephen Fry was promoting, or he was like an advocate for prostate. Should we use the word health? Okay. I don't like that word, the other word, the C word. And I'm not talking about see you next Tuesday. I'm talking, that doesn't bother me. The other word, the other word bothers me. I don't like it. Just, ugh. Um, because I am weak, I'm a weak, weak, weak person, so, oh, maybe not, maybe I'm just human, maybe I'm sensitive, I might be a sensitive soul, you don't know, it's possible, anyway, Stephen Fry, who's a very famous person in this country, he may also be famous in your country, I don't, I really don't know, 
Um, I think he's a really good actor. He, whenever I see him, because usually he kind of does more cameo stuff. So it will be in a TV show because he was in The Sandman. And it was only, I think, in one episode, but he was so good in it. I mean, you could say, yeah, it was just playing himself, but, it, you know, because it, you know, it's just, he's not putting on a different accent and he looks the same, you know, because he's quite eccentric looking, I would say. But at the same time, he's, yeah, I, I like him. Anyway, he was advocating for men to get tested and he was on a radio show, so I was listening, I think LBC. So I got to really hear him there. Uh, so he was interviewing, and he was talking about his own experiences. And he was saying, the thing that puts men off most about getting tested is the actual test itself. That's the thing that put a lot of men off because it's just, it's intrusive. It's an intrusive thing. Um, <laughs> without poppers. No, it's an intrusive thing. Um so, and a lot of people, a lot of men, men I'm going to say men because women generally don't need to have these exams. But for anyone that also, any women that need to have prostate exam as well. So, it's, but now he said, ah, the good thing is now they can test it with a blood test. You don't have to have the the digital test, as it were. Is that a good example? Is that a good ex explanation? I actually, <laughs> I remember my dad talking about it with someone, and they were talking about the we're talking about getting tested, and because of my uncles and my this person said to my dad, "Oh, where where was the prostate anyway? Where, is it down the throat? Is it?" And I was like, "Wow." And I'm thinking, you know what? It was a female that said that. And I'm thinking, well, there's no reason really for a, a female to need to know about the prostate because that's a part of the body they don't have. It's almost like, what do I know about um, the, the, you know, um, are you wondering how I'm going to word this so I don't get in trouble? About the, not the flappy parts, um, um, about the, the fe like parts of the female anatomy that I perhaps don't have. I was going to say boobies, but I do have boobies these days. I do. Um, C cup. So I don't know. So there's no reason necessarily for me to, for me, you know, for a woman to know about that stuff. Unless they're a medical specialist, you know, a doctor or something then it's useful, I guess, <laughs> I suppose. You know, I mean, eventually you'd find out if you were a doctor and you were sticking your fingers down their throat, like, no, it's it's the other one. Um, personally, I think I'd rather have this, I'd rather have the, uh, anyway, n never mind. So, I, when I, when I heard this, interview on the radio I'm not saying I'm not going to say I got excited because the whole subject does not excite me because I mean at the time both my uncles were still alive one actually passed away so it you know it's just, this is serious serious in our family the other one the other uncle I got caught early so I think I hope that he's okay, but then another person in my family also has it now. So I, which is why I kind of really had to get tested. But I went to the doctor. So this is a couple of years back, a few years ago, and I said, "I'd like to get a prostate exam, please." Why do you want a prostate exam? You're only 46 or 47 or whatever you don't need one I said no I've I, I want to get it done because it's in my family 
I don't know my mum's side of the family at all. I don't know any medical history on my mum's side. But I know on my, my, on my dad's side, at the time, two close relatives, what, uncles, had it. And she said, well, if, you, you, if you're going to, you need to have, you know, the digital test. And I said, no, 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 no. Stephen, Stephen told me that you can get it done by blood test. She said, who's Stephen? I said, Stephen Fry. She said, do you know Stephen Fry? I said, no. Why are you pretending you know Steve? Why are you saying you know Stephen Fry if you don't then? I said, I don't, I never said I knew Stephen Fry. She said, you literally just told me, like, 52 seconds ago, that you were told by, you know, Stephen Fry actually verbalised to you that you can get a blood test to get tested for this. You said he, he told you. I said, okay, he told me and probably a few a hundred thousand at the same time. He said, what kind of venue holds that many people? I said, it wasn't a venue. It was a TV. No, it wasn't TV. Well, what else could it have been? I said, radio. And the doctor said, radio? Do they still have radios? I said, yes, they, they still have radios. Well, that seems a bit old-fashioned. And we've got the internet now. I know we got, I use the internet as well. It's not exclusive, like you can only, if you can't, if you use the internet, you can't use the radio. I use the radio. It's all digital now anyway, so I happen to be a verbal person. I like to listen to things, as opposed to, I prefer to listen than to read now. I never realised, that was never an option when I was a kid. It was a case of, you read or nothing. Now, I can listen to audiobooks and I I appreciate it more. Uh, I think uh, I get more from it. And she said, why are you telling me all this? What's this got to do with why you came in? You, you like to listen to audio books and you used to read and you get more from it. As, what's that got to do with the prostate? I said, look, your bedside manner isn't so good. She said, ah, but I'm not sitting next to a bed, am I? And my stomach gurgled. And I, s I said, it, well, Eddie, can we just get back to why? Yeah, uh, okay. Steve, okay, let's go back. I heard Stephen Fry on the radio, who had been diagnosed himself with that prostate issue. He said, that he became an advocate because of it, so you got to have, take your hat off for that. I'm not wearing a hat, she says. Like, oh, very antagonistic today. She said, "Yeah, I know. I thought I got out the wrong side of the bed." I said, "Oh, it never happens to me." She said, "Oh, you're perfect, eh?" I said, "No, my bed's against the wall. It's impossible." <laughs> we both laughed. Honestly, we were rolling around. And it's really weird because we start, it's, it, it started off not nice and we started tickling each other. And yeah, we've been married for about five years now. No. Uh, so I said, look, can I please get a blood test? Stephen Fry wouldn't be allowed to be going on the radio. He's not giving medical advice, but he wouldn't be advising people about such a serious thing unless there was truth in it because that would be what's well, illegal it's not you know i can't do that and she said well you're correct i said thank you she said no 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 i'm not finished yet your beard is very gray i said what's that got to do with anything my beard being gray she said, I just, it's distracting me. Why didn't you trim it? Why don't you trim yours? 
she didn't laugh at that one. I, like, what's my beard got to do with the prostate, you know, conversation that we've been experiencing together? She said, nothing, it's just very distracting. And why have you only got one shoe on? <laughs> I said, like, it's a long story. It's a long story. You, do, you don't really want to hear it, do you? She said, normally I don't. But unfortunately, um, well, my next customer or patient, I have to do a prostate exam on him. And I really don't want to. I don't like doing it. So I'd rather just chat to you and, uh, you know, put that off as long as possible. It's a messy business. I said, well, you, well, why don't you do mine then? She said, well, I don't like doing them. But you didn't you didn't book in to do it. You need to book that in advance. You know, you can't just turn up and expect to get it. I said, why not? Well, she said, like, look, if you turn up to a restaurant, you're not guaranteed a seat, are you? If you that's why you have to book. I said, this isn't a restaurant, though, is it? She said, no, it's not, but it's a good analogy. I don't think it is a good analogy. I, I think you're a bit wrong. You're a bit off on that one. I said, OK, OK. Right, here's a better one. If you get on a train and you've got a, a long journey, you get on a train, if you don't book the tickets in advance, then you don't get a seat. You're not guaranteed a seat, are you? And you could end up standing or sitting on the floor for the whole journey. I said, well, okay, that is a better, it's a better analogy, but, you know, better than the other one. But I don't really, because I'm just thinking prostate exam, eating in a restaurant, doesn't the two don't seem to really fit together. But I imagine, you know, there's been times when I've been stuck for a seat and I've ended up sitting on the public toilet, not in the toilet inside the train, rather, for the whole journey. She said, you, you did what? I said, yeah, don't worry, it was, it was clean. She said, no, it wasn't. There's no such thing as a clean toilet. It just, but, but, the word toilet indicates dirt. I said, yeah, I don't, I'm not saying it was like perfectly clean. I wouldn't eat my sandwich off of it, usually. She said, this is weird. This, this has gone in a really weird direction. And I said, look, I just, all I wanted to do was ask you about the blood test so that rather than having the digital test, you know, for those thinking digital test, what's that online, is it? Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, and she said, but you have to book it. I said, I kind of, we've been through that, so I understand you can't do it. I said, no. And she said, no, I don't have time. However, yeah. The story about your shoe, why you've only got one shoe on. I do have time to hear that. I said, well, so you haven't got time to help me to determine whether or not I've got some, well, to, to determine the health, my health which I would say is possibly a bit more important than why I've only got one shoe on. She said, yeah, technically it's more important, but it's not as interesting. You wouldn't believe how boring this job is. I said, but you're, you're a hero. You're saving people's lives. You're, you're, you've got one of the most important jobs on the whole planet, being a doctor. I mean, it, it's up there with... It's, there's... Well, there's not really any other more important job, really, in the whole world. You know, your doctor, surgeons, nurses, paramedics, the police, the fire service, astronauts. You know, it's it's they're important jobs, and isn't that enough just to know? I mean, just don't you feel good? I mean, how can any any anything be boring to you when you're literally helping to save the world? 
She said, I'm bored now. I said, what? She said, you're, you're so boring. She said, I, I thought your beard was boring. But then I'm thinking, is that why you let it grow out? So that it's something... Because compared to your personality, your your beard is actually mildly interesting. <laughs> I said, this is just getting rude. I j just please, can we focus on the blood test? Just can I please have a blood test to check the health of my prostate? And she said, well, you can tell Stephen Fry from me. Uh, I was thinking, yeah, okay, go on then. You want me to pass a message on to Stephen Fry? Because at this point, I'd forgotten I don't even know him. She said, let him know that you can't get an accurate result from a blood test. This, this is 100% what she told me. Okay. And, and I said, well, why is he going telling people that you can then? Well, if you can't, then why, what was, seriously, what? She said, I don't know, but they're not accurate. And, and this is years ago. I said, well, I don't want to, I, I just, I don't, I don't know what to say. She said, good. Maybe you'll stop talking. It's a really weird conversation. So I'm like, are you always like this? She said, no, it's not always, but just sometimes. I, do you ever get, have you ever had a job where usually it's okay and you're dealing with the public, you know, it can get a little bit frustrating, a little bit <sighs> challenging maybe, you know, a little bit, doesn't always go to plan. But, you know, you get through it. Yeah, have you ever had a job like that? I said, yeah, yeah, I used to work in sales. I've, I've worked, I've worked in supermarkets. I've worked in a chip shop. I've worked, she said, no, no, okay, I don't need to know all your jobs. She said, so usually I'm fine. But you ever get that one person that comes in and you just can't, just cannot tolerate them at all. And everything they do winds you up. Even the way that they stand or the way that they breathe just rubs you up the wrong way. I said, yeah, I suppose. She said that you're that person to me. It's like, wow. <laughs> it's like, it even got to the point where I was like, okay. It's hard to argue on that one. I mean, if that's how you feel, that's how you feel. Now tell me about your shoe. I said, it's not really an issue. Basically, an issue to get that issue. Not really an issue. All it was is I was getting ready to come out. And I was just walking here as I normally do. And there was some... Uh, at our builders or the council they were laying some pavement laying some paving uh, or doing a fixing the pavement a sidewalk whatever you want to call it and I trod in the concrete now the concrete was untouched it was just freshly laid the people that had laid it were standing the other side of the road or chatting smoking and drinking coffee I don't know if it's coffee. I didn't actually test each cup, but you know, drinking what looks like a hot, hot drink. I mean, it might have been a cold drink, but there was steam coming out of it, so I'm guessing it was a hot drink. Some things you can just guess or surmise, if that's another word, a similar sort of word. Now, they hadn't seen me tread into their piece of art. Because I'm, 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 I imagine if you're do a job like that. Let's say you're laying concrete on the floor. It's a bit of art, isn't it? It's, uh, you know, it's like you can have a bit of pride for your work. 
uh, you put cordons up so people don't stand in it unless they walk around the cordons or you know dip underneath the plastic wiring which I did and I didn't want to upset them I didn't want to look at me like I was some kind of a weirdo so what I did is when I stepped into into the concrete it went up to me and me an- yeah about me ankle kind of area so what I did is I just left the shoe in there and I just came just carried on walking and that's it that's just the whole story really so just a standard standard journey except uh, I ended up with just one shoe and uh, she said well did the people did, did the the workers see you do it? I said, no. Did they see you leave your shoe in there? I said, no. So where did you go? Did you walk back? I said, no. No, I carried on walking where I was going. So you carried on walking past the workmen or workwomen? I said, yeah. Uh, did they notice you? I said, yeah. They were laughing. They kept shouting out one shoe, one shoe, Hugh, which was a bit weird, weird. I don't know how they knew my name was Hugh. I thought your name was Jason. Yeah, no, Hugh's my middle name. Oh, why well, don't you use that? It's nicer than Jason. It's not nicer than Jason. Well, there's no nicer name in the world than Jason. It's a lovely name. It means healer. Are you sure? Yes, it does. It means healer or healing hands. Well, that wouldn't hold up in court, would it? I know, I've been saying it myself since I was about 20. I know, that's been, a, no one ever laughed, but I've always said it. She said, well, yeah, perhaps you shouldn't say it anymore. I said, but you just said it yourself. And then she said to me, do you ever wonder when people listen to this on the podcast, whether or not they can follow it, if they know who's saying what. I said, well, what do you mean? She said, well, it's the same voice, isn't it? It's just your voice talking. I imagine it's not that easy to follow because I'm talking, then you're talking, but we both sound the same. There's no, and then she said, and then I said, and then she said, and the doctor said, and I said, And then I said, you don't do any of that. Occasionally you do. But generally, it's just back and forward. I'll be honest, uh, Hugh. I struggle to know who's speaking. And I'm the one speaking. I said, well, it's weird. Hugh just sounds wrong, doesn't it? She said, yeah, it did. I I don't even know you but you just don't look like a Hugh. But then you don't look like a Jason either. Really? Well, what, kind of, what, what do you think I look like? I don't know. Pat. Pat? Yeah, Pat. Or Eric. Yeah, you look like an Eric. I like the name Eric. It's a good name. Not really. No, no, I think... This is me speaking. I think it is a good... I like Eric. I had a friend called Eric. Well, I had a name called Pat. A name. I had a friend called Pat. So, it was a competition about what people we know that have names. I mean, everyone has a name. I'm not saying that people don't have names. Although... Oh, this is interesting. I doubt it. This... Oi... This is interesting. I had a friend who changed his name by deed poll before I met him to Free Spirit. I don't, I never knew him by his other name. And before I met him, because he worked in the same shop as me, I'd not met him, but I'd heard about him. And I was told, oh, his name's Free Spirit and everyone calls him Free. I said, nah, that's just silly. This is back in 2003, so, or 2004. So I was, it just, I don't know, I 
I had a little bit of an attitude on me back then. I just thought, no. No. No, 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 no. And I met him. And he was lovely. And I just called him free. I called him free. Just that it just naturally, if it would, I think it would have been difficult had I known him as uh, Stephen Bobblehead, whatever his original name was. But knowing him as Free Spirit, and he changed his name by Deed Pole, he had it on his passport. Every time he went on abroad, he, they would, he went to another country, they would pull him up. And they would interrogate him because of his name. I said, what's your real name? That is my real name. No, what's your real name? That is my real name. But what's your legal name? No, this is my legal name. Look, my credit cards have got the name on it. My passport's got my name on it. What about your birth certificate? I don't have that. Why not? Why would I take a birth certificate on holiday with me? Bad enough, I've got to take my girlfriend. Boom, boom. Um, she, it's like, he was nice. He was nice. I kind of just, but if if I'd have known him as Eric, that's gonna, I'm going to stick with that name. If I'd known him as Eric, then that would have been strange to start calling him free. But he really was a free spirit. Like, that's why he, he named himself that. But he was... A proper character. And the doctor said, why are you telling me this? I said, I don't know. It's, uh, she said, I'm, I'm going to guess. I know why you're telling me this. I said, why? She said, because you're supposed to be talking about the newspapers. Yeah. This podcast is called Sunday Papers. But so far you've mentioned two stories. One which is about celebrities wearing corsets. And the other one which led you to talking about prostate. And you've not even mentioned the story. You've not even told everyone the story yet. I said, I know, I know. Why can't you just focus? Judge, try focusing on what you're supposed to be doing. Remember that it's Sunday papers and then bring yourself back to talking about the papers. Because otherwise, what's the point in paying £12 a month for the for the newspaper app if you're not actually going to use the newspapers? I said, look, my intention was to use the newspapers, is to read through it. And I have done in the past, but sometimes... Very occasionally, the odd moment here and there, I may slightly drift off into a different lane, heading in a completely alternate direction. And she said... Really? I don't think anyone's noticed. Uh, was, that, was that sarcasm? She said, yeah, it was. I said, I'll be honest, I don't know. I mean, perhaps if I put a big sign on the wall saying Sunday papers just to remind me to come back to it. She said, that's not a bad idea. But I do have a question. I said, go, go on then. She said, well, when you do the Q&A Friday, you do manage to keep bringing it back to the questions. You you, you drift off, you you know, you waffle on, a bit rude. Yeah, I know, but it's true. You, you waffle on a little bit, but you do bring it back to the questions. And I said, yeah, I, I, I agree, I do. I think I do a pretty good job of that. She said, not really what I was saying, but you you do... You kind of do manage to bring it back. So what's different about the Q&A Friday and the Sunday papers? And don't say one's Q&A Friday and one's Sunday papers because that would really annoy me. And then I will give you that prostate exam. I said, okay, blimey. Um, I, 
don't know. Maybe it's because I've done quite a few of the Q&A Fridays. There's, I've probably done maybe five months worth of them now. Probably done quite a lot. And it's become part of my week. It's, it's almost like a weekly tradition now. Which might sound weird, but it, and I think it's because I do want to actually answer the questions because it's, the questions have come from people who listen to me and they've gone, they've made the effort to ask me a question. So it's important to me to try and answer those questions. She said, but in that case, why don't you answer them properly? <laughs> I was like, okay, wow, didn't see that one coming. It was weird considering I'm the one that said it. I I like to think I do answer them properly, but you know, at the same time, I don't generally, my aim is not to be too serious with these recordings. You know, I try and keep it light. Uh, if you want serious, then watch the news. There's a lot of serious stuff on there. I'm not, you know, I'm not like completely one dimensional and, you know, I, I can, I can be serious. I really can at times, but with the podcasts, I generally don't too, I don't do too much of the serious stuff. I like to keep it, um, nice. You know, I want people to listen I want people to feel comfortable and relaxed and to just let go of stuff, you know, not, not, it's, I like to think of my podcasts as being, um, easy, you know, do you mean easy listening? Yeah, I suppose, but not, I don't want it to be the verbal equivalent of elevator music. Or lift music. You know, I don't... I want it to be a little bit more than that. I don't want it to be just completely bland. And almost that you don't even know it's happening. Because some background music... You know, maybe in a... Hotel lobby or in an airport or... In a shop or in a lift. It's almost... Don't even notice it's going on because like... do 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 I don't want to be the equivalent of that, but I'd like at the same time to try and be able to just kind of be there, but not necessarily be prominent, so that then people, if they, who are listening, choose to that they're listening to fall asleep, you know, relax and fall asleep, that they can do. And I'm not like, I'm not requiring anyone's attention. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not really asking questions and I'm not necessarily needing anyone's full attention or asking people to really be part of it in a sense I guess I'm kind of like just a background sound to some people and I'm not talking just about my family and friends and she said oh it nearly brought a tear to my eye I said really she said no can you leave please I said okay but what did you think about the story of my shoe she said well Okay, I got a couple of comments. First of all, why did you go underneath the tape which said do not cross and walk into the concrete or the pet? Is it concrete? Cement, concrete, whatever it was. I said, yeah. Why? I just, I don't know if. Okay, here's what it is. I always wanted to be in a marathon. But I don't think I've ever really had the fitness. I don't think I've ever... Even when I was a kid, even when I used to run for hours, I don't think I've ever had that type of fitness to 
do 26 miles or tw- is it 26 or 27 miles for a marathon I just don't I mean I don't I'm not sure if I could even at my very fittest I don't know if I could have even walked 27 miles you know at my peak when it drew my life I don't know if I could have even done that and she said well most people do train you know and I said okay but there's been times when I was training regularly what for a marathon I said no we said that's what you train for the marathon you know you don't train for a swimming race by having a hot hot dog competition eating thing do you you don't you know I said that wasn't really a good a good example was it she said no I didn't have enough time to really think it through I said do you want to have another go she said I don't know I think the moment's passed it would have been funny if I'd have just come out with something really good on the spot but I feel like I'm being looked at you know a little bit it's just like oh I said I know how you feel I know how you feel it's, uh, it's, it's sometimes it's a bit of pressure isn't it she said, yeah, I don't know how you do it. I said, what, what do you mean? Well, how you just, can, how you're able to be yourself. I said, thank you. She said, that's not a compliment. You what? No, I just don't know. How can you walk around being you? And just not, I mean, how can you leave the house? I said, that's rude. That's so rude. She said, yeah, but don't you ever, like, wish that you were someone else? I said, not, well, yeah, in a fantasy way. Yeah, I I mean, yeah, to be a a pop star or to be, uh, you know, someone really handsome man or, or, you know, I don't know, uh, Killian Murphy, for example. Someone beautiful like him. He's a beautiful man. This, this, you think he's beautiful? I said, yeah, it's okay to say that because it's, it's a fact. Some people, some men are just, uh, just amazing looking. George Clooney, Brad Pitt. It, it's hard to argue against it, to be fair. They, not only are they, they've aged so well as, as well because they're all like in their 90s now and it's just it's amazing how how the genetics and I mean maybe the living the way they live as well she said they're not in the 90s why do you have to exaggerate all the time always always exaggerating well to be honest doc I would say that you were exaggerating then by saying that I exaggerate all the time besides this is the first time we've met how would you know what I do, not just all the time, but any time? She said, look, it's just a guess. I've spent enough time with you. I mean, we've been together now for about six hours. I said, yeah, you really are putting off that, that next patient, aren't you? She said, yeah, I know. It's just, uh, I shouldn't really tell you this, but... Uh, Oh, it's it's just okay. I won't give you any personal information, but his name is Derek James. Lives at forty two Gosford Avenue in uh, Milton Keynes. MK four three nine six. Telephone number oh one seven four three four nine two nine eight six. Born on the twenty ninth of the tenth, nineteen fifty two. Uh, it was a Friday. His mum's maiden name was Smith, and his uh, yeah, I think he he had a a pet cat when he was a kid called Cat. Anyway, he last time he uh, wait a second. I thought you were going to give me any personal information. I said, I didn't tell you what colour his hair was, did I? They're yeah, true. Size nine shoes. Sorry, I'll stop now. Uh, anyway, last time he came in, 
for a prostate exam, which was five years ago. It's every five years we do it. I said, okay, yeah. She said, well, he was constipated. I said, okay, how long has he been constipated? She said, well, up to the point that he came here. I said, <laughs> I said, okay, so that was the end of his constipation. She said, yes, it was. Um, I don't think you need to tell me any more, do you? She said, no, probably not. So you can understand why I don't really not look in to do it again, because we couldn't use this office for about three months. <laughs> That's more information than I needed. She said, I know, uh, I, lo I love telling people about it. Oh, I'll tell you what, look, look at what's this. She pulled out a picture of him. Like, not just his face. It's like, wow, this is so unprofessional. She said, I know, it's terrible, isn't it? But, you know, considering doing this kind of job, I'm pretty much like the master of the universe in, in a way, aren't I? Helping... You know, being a doctor and, I, you know, we kind of, we do rule the world a little bit. And I'm like a queen, really, if you think about it. So, but it gets a little bit boring sometimes. So, we just have to kind of make up our own entertainment. I said, uh, can I ask you a question? She said, yeah, well, I've got two. Okay. First question is... Is that what you're doing now? You're just making up your own entertainment? And she said, yeah, kind of. What's your second question? Okay, second question. Are you really a doctor? She started laughing and she said, no, I'm not. What do you mean you're not? She said, no, I'm just a cleaner. Just came in here. This office is being changed. The, um, basically redoing the office. And I'm I'm cleaning it. I'm going to be painting it and everything. And we're just basically packing stuff away. You just happened to walk into the wrong room. And I thought it was funny. So I thought I'd just pretend to be a, a doctor. I said, what? She said, yeah, sorry. I just, I thought it would be funny. Because, you know, whenever I do a job. Because this is a contract we've got. For the next probably three months. And we're renovating about a third of the building. Parts of it we can't, we're not able to renovate because it needs the inspector because there's asbestos in the ceilings. So we need to get uh, the inspectors to come in and remove that before we can, well, before the, the whatever it is, the trust, the NHS trust can get that those offices done. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to give us the other contract but they're giving us a contract for the next three months. I said, okay, that's a lot of information. She said, yeah, I know. But I'm trying to explain it to you, you see. And anyway, whenever we get a new job, a new place, uh, I like to play a practical joke. And you are that practical joke. And I said, okay, well, I've heard it all now. She said, "Wait, wait! You haven't heard all of you haven't heard it all yet." And I like to film it and stream it live on Facebook. I said, "Really? I get what?" She said, "Yeah, it's funny, don't you think?" I said, um, "Hmm, hmm." She said to me, she looked me in the eyes, and she said. Boo. <laughs> she didn't see that. You've run out of things to say now, haven't you? I said, yeah, I kind of have. Um, it's gone on, it's, it's actually conversation had gone on a little bit longer than it normally does. What do you mean normally does? Well, these like pretend conversations, sometimes they go on for a few minutes, but this seems to have gone on for a lot longer and I'm not even sure how we got to this point she said are you finding it difficult to move away from it 
from the conversation, like finding an exit. I said, yeah, that is exactly it. I'm struggling to find an out, uh, to find a way to sort of maneuver into the next, the next thing. She said, well, you could just, if you know what the next thing you want to talk about is, you could incorporate an aspect of that into the conversation with me and then sort of move gently into that conversation. You see what I mean? I said, I suppose so. I just don't know. I don't, can't know how to do that though. Well, okay, you could, let's say I've got an idea. I'll give you something. You could, why don't you talk about the prime minister? Well, I already did. No, no, you talked about the previous, two previous prime ministers, Boris and, I uh, can't remember her name. I said, okay, why don't you talk about the current prime minister? Old Starmer. I said, yeah, well, how would I, um, how would I move into that? Well, if you look at the newspaper, does it, has it got anything about him? Because they always do continuously talk about him. I said, uh, okay, let's have a look. All right, there's an article about his first hundred days in office. So what's the headline? It says, I'm just getting started. Okay, well, what we could do, if I say to you, if you say to me, so how how long have you been here doing the renovations and cleaning up and everything? Because you're just a cleaner. I said, no, I'm not just a cleaner. I'm the cleaner, but I do other things as well. Yeah, don't try and... Uh, put down my occupation I'm not trying to put down your occupation I'm just saying I, I've been a cleaner myself and that's, that's supposed to make me feel good is it you telling me what you've done what, what's the relevance of that I'm just saying that I've got I'm not disrespectful towards cleaners because I've had loads of cleaning jobs myself she said well I've only had one and um, so I'm probably better than you aren't I I said no at there is nothing wrong with being a cleaner. I did it. I spent years doing cleaning jobs. And why is that? It doesn't matter why. Just that, that that's what I did. She said, okay, well, you, you just, if you ask me how long I've been doing this, this particular contract. Okay. So, uh, okay, here we go. So, oh, by the way, how, before I go, how long have you been doing that contract? Have you, no, ask me how long I've been here. Don't say, oh, how long you've been doing the contract. That doesn't even make sense, really. Just say, how, how long have I been here in this office? Okay, all right, all right. How long have you been here in this office? Well, mate, do you use your own words? So it's like, use my words, just copy me verbatim. I like that word. It makes me look intelligent. I said, no, it doesn't. Um, I said, okay, so how long, how long you been here then? How long you've, uh, have you, have you, have you, have you, have you been here? She said that was rubbish, but anyway, uh, only a little while. I, I'm just getting started. Okay. No, no, I've just said that. Now you can say, Funny enough, that's what Starmer said. That's what the Prime Minister said. I'm just getting started. See? Oh, okay, okay. Let's do it again. Come on. Okay. How long have you been here then? I'll put a bit of energy in. That sounded like you just... You clearly weren't interested in the answer, were you? I said, okay, okay. Hey, how long have you been here then? No, that just sounded weird. Blimey, you know, I mean, no one would, no one in the world would be that excited about how long I'd been here. Okay, uh, here's another go. So how long have you been here? Oh, 
That's better. What is? I don't he's sporting now, do they? Okay. How long you been there? Oh, uh, not long. In fact, uh, I'm just getting started, really. I said, oh, well, you know the new Prime Minister has uh, been cleaning and uh, going to be decorating his office. No, that's not what I told you to say. Why are you talking about the Prime Minister cleaning his office? You're talking about, that's what you said to do, to say that the Prime Minister is doing what you're doing. No. What did the headline say? Oh, let's have a look. I'm just getting started. Yeah. So he's talking about his first hundred days, you said. His first hundred days in office as a Prime Minister. The headlines, I'm just getting started. And you want to move from this conversation, which is dragging on, let's be honest, to talk about the Prime Minister. So by asking me how long I've been doing this job, and you say, and I say, oh, uh, you know, not long, just, just getting started, really. And you can say, yeah, you, do you understand what I'm saying? And you can move on. I said, all right, okay. I said, uh, so, how long have you um, been working here? Because the Prime Minister's uh, only just getting started. So he said, no, no. Wh wh that doesn't even make sense. It does, because I'm talking about the newspaper article. But how are the listeners supposed to know that? We're having a conversation about you know, uh, me cleaning this office and then going on to do whatever else I'm doing. But how, talking about the Prime Minister, just getting started, how is that going to, especially, I hadn't even told you I just got started. Okay, okay right. Okay, so what you need, right. I, I know what you need. I know what you need me to do now. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. One more time. Okay. Go. Oh, you put me off. I didn't know you were going to say go. Okay, all right. I'll keep quiet. Just go ahead. Hugh. Huey. I said, no, don't call me that. It's not a popular name these days. Oh, okay. So, why is that? It's a different newspaper article. Just let's just move on. So okay. So why? Uh, okay. Now. So how long have you been doing this for then? She said, uh, "Oh, uh, not long. Um, in fact, I'm only really just getting started. Actually." I said, "Oh, you're just getting started, are you? You know who else is just getting started?" Uh, the Prime Minister of the UK is only just getting started as well. Because um, it reminds me of a newspaper article that I read, which uh, had the headlines, I'm just getting started. And it's all about the Prime Minister talking about his first 100 days in, in office and how he's just getting started. How about that? Was that a good one? You know what? I have no words. Um, yeah, I, I, I'll tell you what. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah. So, so do you think I should do that one again and then move on? No, no, no. You don't need to do it again. You've done it. You can just move on to the uh, the conversation about that article. You don't need to say any more. I feel I kind of feel I do though. Really, I don't. I mean, do we? It's, 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 yeah, you know what I mean. No, not really. I don't know what it means. I said maybe. I got an idea. Maybe 
you can say something, I said to the doctor, maybe you can mention something which would then lead me onto the story or onto a different story. She said, uh, okay. I remember uh, the last time you did a podcast when you said, uh, do you remember you said that thing at the end, like, I hope you all uh, remember to be happy to yourself or something. I said, oh, be kind to yourself. She said, yeah. She said, I love hearing you say that. Remember to be happy, be fruitful or to all that with yourself. I said, you mean be kind to yourself? She said, yeah, I like hearing you say that. That's my favorite part. I said, why is that? She said, because it means it's the end of the recording. I was like, that is so, so rude. So rude. And she said, you're rude. I said, well, I'm not. She said, well, you haven't talked about anything. You've literally wasted the entire recording having some false, made-up conversation about nothing for about 19 hours and you didn't even finish the conversation that that was about to start with and the newspaper article that you'd start talking about that led you to have this fictional conversation this dialogue of sorts it's just what was that I mean, that sounds a little, little bit like a, a pregnant goat trying to entice a penguin out of a tree. She said, that was weird. That was a weird, a weird image. I said, I oh, know. But anyway, uh, that was a weird sound you made. She said, I know, I'm just flummoxed. I'm flummoxed of what you're saying. And um, I'd love to hear that last bit of what you say. The last, you know, last thing you say. I said, okay, I can say it for you. You want me to say that? Yeah. All right. Um, thank you for listening. And remember to be kind to yourself. Because you do deserve to be happy. Be gentle with yourself. Lots of love. Bye. Is that the one? Hello? Where's she gone? Oh. Oh well. See you everyone. I will be back again tomorrow. Bye. Relax in a more deep and meaningful way, maybe in a way that can not just allow you to feel calmer now and throughout the time we spend together here, not just relaxed at the end of the recording when it's finished and you can enjoy that sense of comfort and peace, but also I think it would be nice to have those feelings of relaxation continue for longer after the recording is ended. So that you can still benefit from listening to my voice 
maybe in a few hours time, perhaps tomorrow. And then by listening regularly, especially if you find, like some people do, and myself as well, I sometimes I find one particular recording that really resonates with me. And I'll just listen to it over and over again, like every morning, every evening. There was this recording from, we're going back to about 1999. It, was a, it wasn't hypnosis, but it was a guided visualization. So it kind of was hypnosis, really. And I managed to find it again, and it still has the same effect on me. And part of it was person's voice relaxed me. It just felt so peaceful. And I'd look forward to listening to her in the morning and in the evening. And I knew before even pressing the play button that as soon as I'd done that, pressed the play button, this was in the days of CD players, press the play button. In fact, it might have even been a tape, tape recorder. I'd lie down on the bed and then even without necessarily listening to her words because I had them memorized really. It was as if my body knew exactly what to do. And the muscles just almost went into automatic relaxation. And I remember my mind would slow down. Now, now, I was, I was listening to this recording in the early days of learning hypnosis. And long before I ever made any videos or audio recordings myself because I didn't start doing that till 2006 but I knew I knew how helpful I found Being able to just let go, to have that trust in the person that I'm listening to. Knowing that it's going to be just as relaxing, if, if not more so each time you hear my voice. You may feel the same.
some people have been listening to me for over a decade. Maybe not solidly, obviously not 24 hours a day, but maybe people come back, some people maybe listen every day. And something that I do, which you may not realise by listening, is when I record these recordings, now for example, I also am affected by the words that I say. So if I said to you, focus on your feet, notice your feet relaxing. I will be focusing on my feet. I will be noticing my feet relaxing. If I said focus on your hands, and maybe notice the difference between each hand. Perhaps notice the, the air in the room, the temperature of the room on the backs of your hands. You may start to notice what almost feels like a very light breeze. Even though there may not be any type of breeze at all where you are right now. And as you become aware of your hands I'm also aware of how relaxed my hands are feeling now. comes to potentially drifting off to sleep, which may be the reason you're listening. I also feel drowsy when I make these recordings. I also notice my mind drifting. In fact, at times, I've actually fallen asleep. Without even noticing. And then I carry on talking. It's only when I listen back to do the editing. 
I hear snoring. And I think, I don't remember snoring. I remember talking. Is it snoring or is a pig turned up? That's what I sound like when I snore. And I get really into the whole experience. I don't know how you feel. How relaxed you feel in your feet. How relaxed you feel in your hands. I've noticed more and more that the more relaxed, deeper, level of comfort you feel, the easier your breathing becomes. It's almost like that additional muscle relaxation. So this allows you to breathe easier. without necessarily focusing on your breath. However, being able to notice in which you breathe so naturally You breathe so very easily and smoothly. Whenever I imagine my breathing improving, when I've got my eyes closed, I tend to Visualize a beautiful field with trees and flowers. Producing all that life-giving oxygen. Feel 
feels nice. To, if nothing else, just take in some time. Away from everything. Enjoying that feeling. Serenity. With a joyful heart. seems to just drip by so very slowly So deeply peaceful. Completely. Unattached. To any thoughts whatsoever in this moment completely free Noticing that your mind has slowed down slowed down. Because nothing really requires your attention. You can enjoy the physical sensations 
of allowing the stress to drip out of your body. Drip in out of every part of your body. being released from your brain and your mind Slowly but surely the muscles in your legs The feelings, the pleasant feelings in your arms and shoulders, deepening each part of your body further and deeper and deeper Noticing the feelings in the back of your neck, Feelings in your wrists, Muscles in the front of your body, are all 
bewusst sein. Feeling. Peaceful. Deeply. There's a sense of peace spreads through your very core. Even when you focus on your mind, the mind becomes even slower. So very slow. stomach peaceful in your stomach back, notice spine from your brain all the way down the middle
position of your back, sending and receiving millions of messages every day. Deeply relaxed. Spreading those signals down your spinal cord into every part of your body. Your shins and your calf muscles. Feelings of peace and tranquility spreading through your body tips of your toes to your eyes your fingers all the way to your lower back. And letting go. Really letting go. Drifting. Mind. Just wandering away. Happy to let go.
so tranquil. Joy in a sense of letting go. Even more Join the space, this space of peace and safety.
letting go. Maybe we can just focus on the different parts of your body, just to notice forehead and your eyes. So loose. Noticing a sense of Complete freedom. Absolute freedom. Peaceful energy.
not have noticed. Your mind drifting. Peaceful. Blissful peace, blissful peace. Total peace. Letting go. body
body feels almost invisible. you could start to notice that you are feeling more relaxed even though I've not purposely focused your mind upon that sense of physical comfort that is growing within you throughout your body and your mind starts to slow down and that could be almost in recognition of I guess my speech not being particularly fast and things just generally feel calmer just by listening to my voice you give yourself a, an opportunity to take a break from the day take a break from your life as it is and to give yourself a rest giving yourself permission to take some time off and to allow your body to relax and allow your mind to slow down which in turn releases the tension any stresses that you had in your body It's almost as if the parts of your body just open up, allowing the negativity out. And at the same time, replacing that negativity with positive, healing energy, which then fills your body up. And your mind to also starts to appreciate those feelings of increasing confidence and an almost uplifting feeling, a positive healing. An energy that spreads through your body like a wave of color. 
comfort. And all this comes from just allowing yourself a few minutes, maybe half an hour, however long you want it to be, to just rest. And allow your mind and your body to almost reset itself to the, to the settings of comfort and relaxation, calmness. which allows more room for feelings of pleasure and happiness to move around your body and into your mind almost as if your mind and your body are sinking together almost mirroring each other with that growing positivity and calmness and it feels nice it really does feel nice to know that you are the one that has allowed yourself to feel more comfort and to experience more of this deep relaxation spreading throughout your body. And as I focus on each part of your body, you can notice that that part becomes even more relaxed just by focusing on it, becomes even more calm and comfortable just by focusing and as I move down your body starting at your head the parts that you've already focused on will continue to relax deeply and those parts that we've not yet focused on will just automatically release any remaining tension in anticipation of even more comfort about to come. Now, I'm going to start by focusing on your forehead. Just being aware of the feelings of your forehead. And any background sounds like Mr. Herbert the Pigeon can just allow you to feel even more relaxed. It just means you're in the moment. This isn't this isn't a sterile environment, this is the world. I live in the countryside, so there's lots of nature sounds around. So as you focus on your forehead, just notice how it becomes even 
more relaxed as you focus only on my voice and that part of your body. Moving down to your eyes, focusing on your eyes, noticing how the, your eyelids feel so heavy, yet so light at the same time, and all the muscles around your eyes relaxing completely, moving your focus down to your mouth, your lips, your tongue, your teeth and your gums, and the whole of your mouth relaxing. you focus now on your jaw, not just the part of your jaw near your mouth, or your chin, but all the way up the sides of your face to your ears, that whole of your jaw, feeling more. in on your neck, the front of your neck and your throat, relaxing and loose and calm, the sides of your neck, the right and left side of your neck. Relaxed and loose and calm. And now the back of your neck. Focus in on the back of your neck. Letting go of any tension that may have been there before and enjoying that sense of increasing comfort and release that you can experience in the back of your neck. Moving down your back, moving either side of your spine, right from the top of your back, all the way down to the bottom of your back. Down to your lower back. As you move up and down your spine, you can feel the muscles either side of your spine relaxing even more. And as those muscles relax, that sense of comfort starts to spread outwards from your spine into both sides of your back. The top of your back, the middle and your lower back. And as you scan gently 
gently and slowly up and down your back as the muscles in the top of your back relax and become looser. The muscles in the middle of your back also seem to just almost divide from each other, separating and almost melting. And in your lower back, there seems to be an extra special feeling of comfort. that spreads into your hips, so down your lower back and into your hips, into the area where your coccyx are, and into your buttocks, and all those muscles that spread from your lower back into your hip area, start to melt, start to really let go, and you know we're about to focus on your shoulders, your back and your spine. Continue to let go, continue to relax, so calmly, and as you focus on your shoulders, you may notice that they're already Feeling really loose. They're already feeling calm. And that feeling. Those muscles that move from your neck into your shoulders. Feel so soft and gentle, so smooth. Feeling in your shoulders seems to spread deep into your shoulders. That sense of relaxation, not just traveling deeply into your muscles. Also relaxing the bones, and moving all the way to underneath your arms, relaxing that whole area between the tops of your shoulders and underneath your arms. Healing and you feel so relaxed and comfortable in your shoulders, which sends that deep healing. 
message. Into your arms. And you may feel almost as if your arms are not even there because they're so relaxed, so deeply relaxed. So Now on your hands, sense of real peace it just seems to feel so familiar
fingertips. attention to the front of your body, so comfortable. muscles in your thighs, your knees, so relaxed. Muscles and your shins completely
so calm. So peaceful. So calm. go of everything so I'm going to start counting down now from 20 down to 1 You can imagine, in a way, it's like just walking down some steps. And each step, all 20 steps, and each step represents a level of comfort. Each step represents a deepening of that comfort. And the further you, you walk down those steps, the deeper and more relaxed you feel. So, starting with number 20. Eighteen. Seventeen.
sixteen. Fourteen. Thirteen.
eight. Six.
As you focus on your eyes, I'm going to count down from ten down to one. Focus in just on your eyes, your eyelids, the 
muscles around your eyes, your eyeballs themselves, the whole area that makes up your eye. As we count down from ten down to one, whilst focusing on your eyes, you will become twice as relaxed with each number counting down. you may find that all you want to do is just drift off to sleep and if that's what you want then just allow yourself to do that Focusing on your eyes, I'm going to begin counting down from ten down to one. Right now, ten.
So counting down from ten to one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. And maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there like 
You're counting down from 10 to 1. What do you expect me to do, man? You expect me just to go all floppy? Just because you're counting down? You could try it again. But this time, I'll go a bit slower. This time, as you focus on the whole of your body, before we focus on your legs, just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed. With every number that I count down. Ten. Seven, six, five, four. just notice how how you feel generally how your body feels it's not necessarily even about counting down from 10 to 1 it's that space that you have that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down just being there not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think think about anything so it, op it opens up a space you know a bit of a space a gap and the more I count down from 10 to 1 the bigger that gap becomes so there's that gap of calmness of comfort, relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it moves those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away. allows you to just slow down. So I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening. 
the gap. And as it widens, it's almost like the the stress and attention falls into the gap. It gives you that distance, that space now. Ten. Seven, six, Three. How does your body feel now? Can you notice the, that you're feeling calmer? Feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on your legs. Just your legs. We're just going to start with focusing on your thighs. course it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm, I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now but just focus in on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs, the bottoms of your thighs, your outer thighs and your inner thighs. Basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip. And then 
goes down to your knee joints. Now this is a big area. It's a very heavy area. It's very strong. Probably the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs. But I don't think we perhaps give enough attention to our thighs. Perhaps we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives. How much they actually do for us. all through our lives. And it may, it may seem, sound really weird, but I think that all of our body parts, especially our thighs, need some TLC. A bit of love shown. A bit of Acknowledgement, a thank you, gratitude for what our thighs do for us. And I know this may sound a bit strange. Maybe you think, why am I sure that I should be out in? in the garden hugging a tree or something well it's hard to set a microphone up on a tree that's why I'm doing this indoors otherwise I would be outside hugging a tree no I can't see the television from the tree if you move down to your knees Again, such an important part. And I think we don't necessarily, I'll speak for myself here, I don't necessarily appreciate all that my knees do for me until I have a problem with my knee. So occasionally if I have a, maybe I bash it or it's aching for some reason. It's then that I realise how much it does. You know, the benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing that's possibly not appreciated until it's temporarily removed you know that comfort but as you focus on your knees regardless of how your knees feel you can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you And you can still have that attention on your thighs. Maybe notice how your thighs feel. Maybe you've noticed that they are relaxing more deeply. As you focus now on the bottoms of your legs, your shins, 
and your calf muscles, and the bones between your knees and your feet, incorporating of course your ankles, so important. It's had even the, like the slightest sprain of an ankle knows how how much we take our ankles for granted and it's kind of strange in a way when you think that you know logically our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms which is okay doesn't can't see any problem with that because we're just picking stuff up but our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs and from a physics perspective or logical even it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles then leading to your feet that thin area thin bone yet it does so much great work supports us supports our body for a lifetime Helps us to balance. Helps you to get around and be mobile. And there's the calf muscles, of course. When I was younger, I couldn't see the point in calf muscles. They didn't seem to do anything. Okay, if I walked around on tiptoes, then my calf muscles get some work. But of course that's not true, the calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs. And your shins, there to protect your lower legs. Shaped in a way almost as a protector for the bone. Leading, of course, to your ankles and your feet. But we're not going to focus on your feet, we're just going to focus on the legs. I realise that now that I've mentioned your feet, you're probably focusing on them anyway. So maybe I should focus on your feet a little bit. You can have them in your awareness. The same as you have your thighs in your awareness. Even though we haven't been focusing on your thighs for a few minutes. You've been focusing on your ankles. There's still that sensation of comfort in your thighs. Almost that movement of energy. Because the thighs hold lots of different sensations. Of course there's the muscles, the big strong muscles that we have in our thighs. But the skin on the outside of the thighs, as in the outside of all of our body can be very sensitive. 
sensitive to the touch, sensitive to temperature. And inside your thighs, the bones, there's the muscle, there's the blood vessels, the arteries. So all this stuff that's inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and a massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course, but to be able to get deep into the muscles, to be able to just massage inside your thighs, massage in the bones of your leg, massage in all the veins and just gently healing your thighs. You could move down, massaging inside your knees, just massaging those bones, but with healing fingertips, spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees. And of course, there's the back of your your knee, you know, the inside crease where your knee is. It's a very sensitive area. Very, feels very nice when you stroke it. That might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often. It's almost like a hidden part, that crease in your legs. It's almost like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different. Of course it's protected by your legs. So you can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs. fold in between your legs, you can just massage with your fingertips, imagine your fingertips going inside, massaging the muscle tissue, you can of course feel the, the bones of your knees healing through your fingertips. And then as you go down to your calf muscles, now that's the part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles, massaging every single tissue of that muscle, healing every part. doing the same for my shins, massaging, gently stroking the bones, gently stroking them, healing in a loving way, because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are, because our legs are so precious, as in all the other parts of our body. They're more precious than any jewel on the planet. And when you start to think about your legs in this way, it can change your perspective. It might sound a bit, a bit silly to start with, 
the idea of having love for your legs, showing appreciation for your thighs, wanting to be able to put your hands in your thighs and massage the muscles in the bones and to get your fingers deep in there releasing all tension just to show how much you care about your legs how much you care for what your legs do for you regularly your knees your calves your ankles the strength of your ankles considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs especially your thighs yet they're so strong so flexible absolutely amazing things your ankles are truly a gift because of what they do for you supporting all that weight regardless of how what weight you are even if you're only 8 stone still a lot of weight for these little ankles Now I'm a lot heavier than eight stone. Double that. Yet my ankles support my body all the time. Although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down. As in fact my whole legs do. My feet also go and my toes clap I'm so happy your legs really and I know that talk about, talking about your legs is probably possibly be among the most in, most boring things you've ever heard anyone say possibly but boring or not everything I said is true your legs are amazing Your legs deserve not just respect, but they deserve to relax deeply. They deserve to take some time out of the day to just let go completely. really can relax and because the legs are so such a most you know very important part of your body when you relax your legs the rest of your body also naturally follows in that 
journey of comfort. I can feel it in my hips. My hips feel really loose. And also in my lower back as well. My lower back really feels, it feels stretched. Even though I'm just sitting in a chair and there's no stretching as far as I'm aware that I'm doing. But it's almost as if the muscles have just relaxed so much that there is a natural stretch as the tension has reduced a lot. Continue to feel wonderfully relaxed. Ten, nine, eight, seven. So I'm just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down, knowing that those numbers counting down represents you feeling calmer not just in your body but also relaxing your mind and just notice how you feel there's nothing to do there's nothing to say there's nothing to think about Starting with number five. Four. Three. One. As you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body. You may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as you're body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax, and a more 
your mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. And there's that calmness that comes from relative quietness. You know, even even if there's background sounds, either your side or mine, it's still going to be quite calm. You know, you haven't got the television on, there's no music in the background unless you're listening to the recording with music, of course. You're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people. Of course you might be, but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own. So, no distractions. And when you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises. A sense of comfort starts to grow. And without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical, this is just a natural process, something that's easy to accomplish. In fact, it's almost you know, the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force. It's something that happens naturally and part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you to take advantage of this space, this time, to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. Yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. And maybe even to fall asleep depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is a tiny bit at the end. The deeper relaxed you become, the easier you find yourself drifting. You can also, if you choose, stay focused on my voice and really enjoy the process of gradually Relaxing 
each muscle in your body. Effortlessly. And just observing the sensation of letting go. Completely. This time I'm going to count from six down to one. And you can notice your mind calming down more with each number that you hear me say. Naturally feeling calm and slow and peaceful six Two. slowed right down sinking deeply into relaxation As you focus on your mind, you may notice. 
notice that there are some thoughts still there, maybe some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. Send love to those thoughts. Sprinkle those thoughts with love. Like little petals from a flower. Just sprinkle it over them. Petals filled with love towards those thoughts. To let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them, you just need them, you require them to just calm down, slow down, quiet down. As you focus on those remaining thoughts, as we count down this time from seven down to one, with each number, just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love, kindness, gratitude over those thoughts. Which will allow them to just melt away and relax deeply. With every number. Those thoughts will become more in with number seven.
Imagine now, notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body. We're going to focus Because the more relaxed your hands are, the more relaxed your body and mind are. And as you focus on your hands, your fingers, there's nothing needed to be done, there's no clenching of fists or tensing the fingers or anything like that, it's just noticing and focusing on your Noticing how they feel. Because the more relaxed your hands feel, the calmer your mind feels. that your mind is starting to drift. Just on your hands and fingers, allowing them to experience a real deepening of that relaxation in your hands and fingers. number from eight down to one you can almost feel that healing and relaxing energy spreading into your hands fingers, becoming even more relaxing with each number you hear going down from eight 
starting with number eight. Seven. Just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. And everything just feels calmer. This is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all of that other stuff that we add. You know, things like stress and worrying and overthinking and anxiety. Generally thinking about stuff. 
we take that away, which is what we do, what we're doing now. We're left with a real sense of peacefulness, which comes to you very quickly. Because ultimately, it's just a feeling. A feeling of comfort. It's almost as if you've gone inside yourself and you've found a special place where everything is peaceful. place where you can feel relaxed and your natural sense of comfort. A place where you can be you. Where you can accept yourself for who you are. A place where you're not trying to please anybody else, ever. A place where you can actually not just love yourself, but in some ways, more importantly, you can like yourself. Appreciate who you are. sense of gratitude is in the air all around you. And it's also a place where you can actually feel the healing energy soaking into your body. soaking into your body and that healing energy spreads through your veins traveling to each and every single part of your body start to realize that actually that healing energy has not just entered into your brain, it's become part of your brain. And that spinal fluid is now mixed with healing energy. Not just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment, but also you start to realize that actually what's happening now with that healing relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life. It's actually changing the way you're going to feel, not just now, but tomorrow and the next day. As your health improves, Not just your physical health, but your mental health. Things that used to bother you in the past, for some reason, no longer have 
the effect that they used to. Because something has changed deep within you. Maybe things that used to cause you to feel anger no longer have that power to control you the way they seem to be able to before. As you realize that you're the one who decides what affects you. You're the one who decides to feel relaxed and calm when you choose to enjoy Noticing these natural developments of healing continuing to grow and improve your life day by day. Including, of course, your ability to relax so much easier and sleep in is the most natural thing in the world to you because falling asleep is something that you've done so many times in your life and you know that you were born as we all were with the ability to fall asleep naturally we were born with that ability to just drift off into a deep healing sleep. Even when we're kids, sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to. We try to <laughs> stay awake. Maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or holiday or something we look forward to. We don't want to go to sleep. The more we want to stay awake, the more we just start to drift. And the more you fight drifting, the more you try and stop yourself from drifting asleep. The deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born not just with the need to relax deeply and to naturally fall asleep, but it's our birthright, it's part of our DNA. And sometimes as we get older in life, Perhaps at times we have forgotten that relaxing completely is not only a wonderfully pleasant experience, it's also really easy. very, very easy to let go, because
because that's all it is, it's just deciding to let go. When you press the play button on my recordings, you have given permission for my voice to relax you. When you press that play button, you have given me permission for my words to affect you in a positive, only a positive way. Opening up useful and healing suggestions that can have such an amazing effect on how you feel right now. as well as those changes that continue long after the recording ends, those changes within you that continue to flourish and grow, transforming your life positive, beautiful way, allowing you to move forward in your life in the direction that you choose for yourself. And this feeling this feeling that you can experience of safety, comfort, calmness. It just feels so nice. It's such a healthy place to be. And that positivity grows within you. Each and every day moving forward. to find that you're more relaxed physically and in your mind is more relaxed. And it's not that you're thinking slower, it's just that your mind will be less clogged up with unnecessary negativity. Because from now on, your mind rejects negativity. From now on, you're going to start noticing when negativity arises. You can just say stop. Stop. And that negativity will turn around and leave you alone. Stop. 
to and that negativity would disappear. as you notice that you feel way more relaxed than you probably expected. You can now congratulate yourself because you're the person that has done this. You are the one that has opened your mind up to the simple facts that you can feel more relaxed in your body and in your mind. You've opened your mind up to the birthright of being able to just Fall asleep easily when you choose. And that's a nice feeling, don't you think? Feels nice, doesn't it? To feel calm with all that healing spreading through your body and your mind. To spend time in that, that special place where negativity can no longer enter. Negativity is banned, it's barred, it's not allowed entry. Doesn't it doesn't des doesn't deserve to be here, doesn't belong here. Negativity has no place in your life. makes room for more comfort, more healing, more relaxation, more peace. Feels nice, doesn't it? To just let go of everything. And I'm going to count down now from twenty down to one. Continue to relax. If you choose, you can drift to sleep with every number you hear me say. You can feel twice as relaxed. Or if you choose, you can feel twice as sleepy. Now, twenty. Eight. 
15. This is your time to just take a break. Your time to relax, to allow your mind to slow down. to give yourself permission to take a break from everything and you're the only person that can make that decision you're the only person that can actually tell your mind Just relax. To just take some time off. So that you can focus on your body getting in touch with how you feel physically and in the process of this body scan where you focus on different parts of your body those parts focus on and observe, even though you're not purposely requesting for those parts of your body to relax, it's kind of expected, you expect when you listen to my voice to feel 
more relaxed naturally. Because when you're listening to me, your attention is focused on my words. And as my words guide you to focus on those parts of your body, your focus increases. which actually calms your mind. And when your mind calms down, your body relaxes. started to focus on your body, you can already feel that healing energy spreading through your body, pushing out stress of your body, including your skin, your bones, your blood, all of your organs inside your body, all of the muscles, all of the fat, all of everything, every hair on your body is filled with that feeling of comfort, of relaxation, increases. Deeply increases. In a way that starts to feel perhaps a bit drowsy, because it's not needed, and it may start to drift, That's what's needed. So if you're listening to this and what you need is deep relaxation, that's what you'll get. If what you need is to fall asleep naturally and easily as your mind drifts, that's also by 
pressing that play button on the podcast and listening to me, you give permission to your body and your mind. In fact, you give the command to your body and your mind to relax. drift off to sleep, if that's what you want or need. And as I focus on the different parts of your body, Focusing on a different part of your body. And you may find yourself drifting. But you don't realize you're drifting until you stop drifting. You get alert again to my voice focusing on different part of your body starts to relax even deeper, because that drifting is basically you already in the sleep zone. sleep, and that's the last you remember until you wake up, in your own time, when you experience the right amount of sleep for you, because when you do, and if you do, sleep, it's extremely pleasant, so relaxing, so deep, human sleep, and it feels so nice. Feel that human energy spreading through you, relaxing you so deeply. Relaxing you so, so deeply. 
Let's focus again on parts of your body. Focusing this time on your forehead. Now on your mouth, your lips, your tongue, the whole of your mouth. Focusing on your fingers, maybe you could move your fingers a little bit so you can focus on each one individually. you focus on both of your hands now, then they seem to just melt into one. Where does your right hand start and your left hand end? Almost as if Focusing on your knees, just noticing how your knees feel. Now focusing on your elbow. Focusing in on both of your elbows. Just observing the feeling of your elbows.
go of everything letting go I'm going to start now and I'd like you just first of all just to see yourself lying down on that massage table, lying on your front, your head is supported, your arms are supported and you feel comfortable and the breathing is really easy and you feel You feel confident in how you look as well, so there's none of that issue of body problems or shyness because I'm a professional and this is a therapy session, so none of that stuff matters whatsoever. This is about you. This is about how you feel and how you can enjoy that sense of comfort and relaxation that comes from letting go and allowing my hands and my fingers to relax you by massaging your body. I want to start off just by placing my hands on the back of your head, just gently, just so you can feel what my hands feel like really on you, so you can maybe feel the warmth of my hands on the back of your head, I'm going to move my hands to the side of your head, not pressing but just holding them there very gently, maybe over your ears and a little bit on your face, just so you can feel my hands, so you can become accustomed to them. And now I'll put my hands on the back of your head again and gently let them slide down onto the back of your neck. You 
can feel my hands gently stroking the back of your neck to start with just so you can get used to the the feeling of my hands on your skin get accustomed to it realize that you're safe and it's all good it's all fine and I'm going to start gently massaging the muscles in the back of your neck with both hands now this is a very trusting situation really because our necks are so fragile and to have someone have their hands around your neck in that way can sometimes be problematic for people which is why massages are quite good because it allows you to relax and to get in touch with trust to feel peaceful and calm and as I massage the sides of your neck gently moving from the bottom of your neck which would be sort of near where your shoulders start I guess all the way up to your jaw your ears kind of area that side of your neck of course is a lot longer than the front of your neck and I'm massaging the, the back of your neck Especially that area where perhaps we hold tension. And as that area is massaged, you can actually feel a sense of release in the back of your neck. And maybe you can breathe it out as well. Notice how it feels. Notice how you feel. Then moving down to that area between your neck and your shoulders, that muscly area, starting to massage that area on both sides. I mean, this would be the area that a lot of people would massage if they were going to give you like a shoulder massage. Even that's not technically the shoulders but it's all the muscles that lead to the shoulders from the neck and again that can hold tension and stress and when massaged sometimes a nice deep massage is useful and you decide how deep that massage is allow our knuckles just to dig in to get to those muscles and to really relax them all the time being firm yet gentle with you Just stroking down that area to your actual shoulders, 
move into the muscles of your shoulders. And maybe initially just pulling up the shoulders a little bit off the table, just to give you a little bit of a stretch, but very gently. And you've got the muscles at the front of your shoulders, the sides and the back. This is a part that can really take quite a bit of pressure, quite a bit of uh, needing, if if you wish, to really release the tension, to really get into those muscles and let your fingers in there. And it can feel really nice. Sometimes it's just being stroked gently or being massaged quite strongly. It can all be beneficial to the relaxation. Of the muscles in your shoulders. Now as we move down your arms, we do one arm at a time, starting with your right arm. And what I'll do is I'll just lift your arm up, just hold it to the side of you. I want it to still be attached. And I just massage the tops of your arms. All the way down to your forearms. Into your wrists. Gently massaging that part, the softer part, which is the under part of the arm, which leads to the crease in your elbow, the inside. It's much more sensitive skin. Sometimes just having that stroked can feel really nice, pleasurable and relaxing. Now moving down to your right hand. Holding your hand in both of my hands, just pressing gently on the back of your hand and stretching the fingers ever so lightly at the same time. Pressing down and massaging each finger. And then starting to massage the palms of your hand. Just turning the hand gently. Stretching it gently. Actually having your hand held can really be an 
emotional experience sometimes, even if it is with a stranger, someone you don't know very well, like a massage person or a therapist maybe, because it's intimate. safe and as I put that right arm back down where it was and you do the same with your left arm exactly the same Massaging the muscles in your arm all the way down to your wrist. Stroking the inside of your arm. Just being gentle or as firm as you require. Massaging your left hand. Stretching the fingers gently. Massaging the palm of your left hand. So comforting. Now just rest your left arm back down. And start to massage your back biggest part of your body, starting at the top, starting again where we were the BFD, that area at the top and between your shoulders, near your neck, going back, massaging that area again, but this time moving down. a downward stroke to the middle of your back, working from the outside inwards, so massaging the, your back but the, the outsides of your back, the parts where your arms would maybe rest against, almost the part that connects your front to your back, and just massaging down firmly but gently as firm as you want, moving down and then moving across a little bit and moving all the way down again, being very gentle and yet firm as you choose. And eventually you get to the spine you can massage the muscles on either side of your spine from the top of your neck all the way down to your lower back. You can 
do that a few times. Sometimes people choose the knuckle or the, you know, the two fingers and just go either side of the spine. Almost just push down, go all the way down to the bottom of the spine. Each time releasing tension and opening up the body, stretching your body so that you feel more relaxed but at the same time rejuvenated. to one side, to your right side, and from the bottom of your ribs to your pelvis, we're going to massage that area of your back, I'll stretch over the other side and I'll pull the muscles gently, and massage and push from one end that side all the way to my side, or to the middle in fact, to where your spine is, massaging that side of your spine, the opposite side to where I'm standing, it's almost like kneading bread, there's that big area which is firm, yet lots there to massage, Potentially one of the most important places to actually have a massage because you really feel it. You really feel the release and the pleasure of having your lower back massaged. It releases so much from your body that's not useful. Starting a healing process which will continue long after this recording is over. Massaging this part of your body not only feels really good for you, but it's actually fun to do because it is, as I said, like kneading bread. It's a part that you can really get a hold of and really massage deeply, if that's your choice. And then I'm going to move over to the other side of your body and do the same with the opposite part of your lower back kneading and massaging from your sides all the way to the middle of your back where your spine is. Pressing and kneading. Firm and gentle at the same time. It feels so releasing. This mixture of pleasure, comfort, release, calmness, relaxation, all mixed together. Plus there's that feeling from your stomach as it's being stretched. Even though you're in your stomach now, you can feel it being stretched because that whole area is connected to your stomach. Now we're going to move, or we'll move further up to your top of your body, and I'm going to do the same. This time, starting 
here, your upper back, put my hands forward over and massage massage in that area up to your spine from the side of your body up to your spine so some of that massage area the muscle tissue uh, or whatever fatty tissue even will be possibly from your chest so it's all connected the chest and the back connect together I'm going to be massaging and just pulling some of that skin from your side up and massaging that area of your upper back all the way to your spine and then I'll move down a bit and I'll continue the middle of your back doing exactly the same thing as gentle or as deep as you choose now I'll move off the other side again and do the exact same thing with the top of your back on the other side from pretty much underneath your arm area really to your spine and then continuing that all the way down including your lower your middle of your back Go to your thighs, the backs of your thighs, and the sides of your thighs. Starting with your right leg, massaging the back and the sides of your thighs, gently and firmly. There's a lot of muscles there. It's an area that can be very tense at times and maybe needs a little bit more pressure than the rest of the body. But that's up to you. You can gently stroke the back of your legs where, you know, opposite your knee joint or underneath your knee joint very sensitive, gentle area. Then working down to your calf muscles, massaging your calf muscles thoroughly and deeply if you choose. Using both hands, Fingers digging deep. To your ankles. In the back of your back of your ankles. Just gently massage in that area. Maybe lifting the leg and stretching it a little bit moving to the right foot massaging the bottom of your feet sides of your feet the 
gently but firm enough so they don't tickle. And just allow the pleasure that you get from having your feet massaged to just overtake you. As I continue to massage your feet, the bottoms of your feet, the sides, your arches, your heel, you can put a lot of pressure into your heel and it feels amazing, yet the arches need to be a bit more gentle. Stretching your toes gently and massaging the bottoms of your toes with my fingers, each one individually. And moving over to the left leg to do exactly the same thing. Starting with the top of the thighs, working the back of the thighs and the sides, massaging deeply and gently that whole area, working all the way down. This is an area that maybe you could like to spend more time relaxing and massaging. So perhaps if you wanted I could make a future recording where I spend more time on one particular area. As you move down your calf muscles, massaging your calf muscles firmly and gently, moving down your ankle and into your feet, massaging the backs of your feet bottoms of your feet, stretching your toes and massaging each toe individually, and that feeling of pleasure and release that you experience when you're having your feet massaged, feels really good. Turn over in your mind, laying on your back. I'm just going to start again with your neck area. And your shoulders. Just to Get back in touch with that area. As we move up, I can clean my hands, make them all fresh, because now I'm going to massage your face gently. Starting off with your forehead, your eyes are closed and you can just stretch your eyes a little bit, pushing up on your eyebrows. And just 
just massaging around your scalp. Massaging down your cheeks, around your ears, into your jaw, gently. The sides of your neck, chin, moving down from your neck down to your chest, starting by massaging the very top of your chest, where the collarbone is, either side of the collarbone. Just massaging the whole of the chest. Moving the chest around. Because it's quite a large area, you can move from one side to the next. where your arms are, stretching up, stretching some of the muscles of your back in the process, moving up over your chest, Just massage gently and slide down towards your stomach, starting in the middle of your chest. And then gradually my hands moving apart and massaging and sliding at the same time, moving down. Just below your rib cage. Moving down and massaging up again. Giving your chest all the attention that it needs to feel completely. So going to be focusing on your sides as well, an area that really doesn't get much attention, but feels really good when it's massaged. Just stroking my hands down the sides of your body, or just below your arms. All the way down to your hips. Now moving to your stomach area. I'm going to stand one side of you like I did when I did your lower back. And we're going to do a similar process of just stretching the muscles from your side. Gently massaging from one side to the next, moving that whole area from below your ribs all the way down to below your belly button. 
hat. And then move round to the other side of you and repeat that. Process of relaxing deeply. feel free and there's something about having your stomach massaged that's different from any other part because we do have a tendency of holding a different kind of stress in our stomachs that we may not be aware of so now Massage your stomach, the front of your stomach, making circles around your belly button. There's a gentleness and a freedom that comes from feeling how you're feeling. And as I now move down the tops of your thighs, the muscles massaging them, I can do this with two legs at the same time, pressing down, massaging deeply, those muscles in your thighs, the front of your thighs. And moving down to your knees, gently massaging the knees. Sliding down your shins, putting pressure on either side of your shin, gently softly but firmly, moving down to your ankles, stroking the tops of your feet, and then with each foot in each hand, just gently massaging the whole of the bottom, your heel, your ankle, your toes, massaging every part of your feet, feels so good just to let go, enjoy the process. Enjoy. and so many feelings that come just from touching your skin. And you can just lie there for as long as you choose. Enjoying the feeling of deep comfort from being massaged by me. Enjoy feeling deep.
do is blow out some candles in your mind. There are going to be a hundred going to blow each one out individually, one by one, starting at a hundred as I count down, all the way down to one, and each time I say a number. Imagine that candle in front of you. And I'd like you to actually physically gently blow that candle out. Just this is not a big Below, it's just a gentle, and that candle will extinguish. And then I'll say the next number as we move down, and you can just blow that one out. yourself feeling more and more relaxed. If you need to sleep, you also find yourself becoming incredibly tired and sleepy. In fact, you may struggle to blow out candles as you feel more and more deeply relaxed more and more to me after a while and even though there may be background sounds where you are you'd be aware of those sounds Just not even notice them at all because they're unimportant. Where I am, I've got the sounds of the birds. Forest, the pigeon, like 
likes to say hello sometimes. And as your plane goes by, there will be traffic and trains in the distance. But none of that seems important whatsoever. say and then you blow that candle out too so easy so simple going to start by introducing the first candle, which is a hundred. First candle, which is one. Positivity growing within you. Relaxation and sleepiness. Expanding. Starting.
to fate. A candle seventy seven. Candle 
those thoughts, worries, concerns about the past, thoughts about the future and even things you've been thinking about today. Just let it all go. Because none of it is useful in this moment. This is your opportunity to just focus on feeling relaxed, allowing yourself to get in touch with that natural sense of peace that we all have within us. It's available for everyone. It just sometimes takes a little bit of effort to set up the right time and place in order for you to just let go. Because when you do decide to let go and relax, that's what your body starts to do. Because you've chosen, you've chosen to just allow your body to unwind and your mind starts to slow down. it's a nice feeling it's a nice feeling at the beginning just to know that you have chosen to decide to, to relax deeply and because you've made that decision your body will just follow suit because sometimes all the muscles in your body need is just permission from you to relax. Because so often we're busy, we're going from here to there, we're walking around and we're doing stuff. And the body doesn't have any time or space to really relax deeply. So it kind of waits for you to lead the way. Waits for your permission. And when you do give your permission, and you give the say-so, you can say, okay, it's time for your body to let go completely and relax totally. Your body just follows. It's all like, like a breath of relief. Ah, oh, let up and now relax. That feeling at the end of a day of a very physical day that you may experience in the past. Or you get home and you just sit down in a chair. Maybe you kick your shoes off and that, oh feels so nice, knowing that you don't have to get up again for a little while at least, and if you choose you can just sit there for maybe an hour or two, and it feels blissful, and just by sitting down like that, your body knows it's time to relax. Your body has been given permission from you. Because it's a mindset. When your mind, you're prepared to let go of everything. And to just completely allow all of the stress of your body to evaporate and when you 
tensions can just gradually vanish. It's almost like magic, really. Because that sense of relaxation in the body is a very natural state. It's not something unusual. It may feel unusual when you first start to relax if you if you haven't really spent a lot of time focusing and giving yourself this space to let go completely and relax and then see more and more of Stalian. But it isn't. It's actually the most natural thing in the world. natural thing in the world to allow yourself to feel really calm in your mind and it is almost like a literal unwinding it's like you press a button tension just releases and it's like a wheel like a cog like the inside of a clock just unwinding and it's almost like you could see the, the little wind up knob that's used just going the opposite way that you'd use to wind it up and the energy that frenetic stressful energy gradually winding down losing its power losing its strength as the sense of relaxation becomes stronger and deeper and you may find to stop listening to me for a while and your mind goes somewhere else and then you realise you're listening to me again and that was just your mind drifting to sleep which is quite natural because sometimes when you're stressed and not, it may not actually be aware of what we need, what we physically or emotionally need in this moment. But when you allow your body and mind to relax completely, and you let go of all thoughts, concerns, worries, feels so nice to be in touch with the calmness of the different body parts as they become looser and looser. and relaxation and 
just breathing out any excess feeling and tension and stress in every part of your body and your mind. And as you start to focus on your mind, maybe you notice that things are come to a standstill and maybe just much, much slower than before. Because your mind is not really needed in listening to my voice. Which allows your mind to relax just as deeply as your body synchronicity between the relaxation of your body and the relaxation of your mind lets you know you're feeling completely calm, loose and positive benefits for your body and your mind and your life to be able to let go of everything and to relax completely in all parts of your body and mind even your bones Muscles are relaxed. Even the skin that covers your body is relaxed. Every hair that you have glistens. this healing relaxation and as you focus the inside of your scalp where your crown is you can start to realize and notice the benefits of your brain to the rest of your body and your mind to relax even more deeply relax even more completely go of any remaining thoughts or concerns allow them to just drop onto the floor because they're no longer necessary in this moment in this moment of deep relaxation
Ganzen aktiv führen. Kaum. Relaxen. Every part of the body. ever-increasing sensations of comfort that are spreading throughout your body. more deeper than 
body scan, focusing on firstly how you feel in your body, not trying to change how you feel, not trying to relax, not trying to move away from any discomfort or stress or tension, just accepting, observing and accepting how you feel in the different parts of your body, just allowing yourself to be exactly as you are. to get in touch with how you actually feel in this moment. So I'm going to start off by focusing you to move your hands around, just maybe move the fingers a little bit, opening and closing the hands very gently, just so that you can get in touch with how your hands and your fingers feel. Focusing now on your feet. And if you can, just do kind of an equivalent with your feet as you've just done with your hands. Maybe turning your ankles, moving the feet around, moving your toes gently. Feet feel in this moment. Focusing now on your eyes. I'd like you to just focus on your eyelids. Maybe you can open and close your eyes a couple of times to really get in touch with how you feel when you do close your eyes. The muscle changes in your eyes when you do close them. Maybe raising your eyebrows which stretches the tops of your eyes. Perhaps squinting your eyes Scrunching up your eyes just so you can really get in touch with all aspects of how your eyes feel right now. Now focusing Just ask you to gently tense your thighs, just very, very gently, just enough so you can become more attuned to the physical sensation of your upper legs front of your thighs and the backs of your thighs, noticing and observing how your thighs feel right now, just 
just noticing the back of the neck, the muscles, and of course they lead to the side of your neck, they also lead to the top of your back, which lead to your shoulders, and as you focus on you're looking up, just maybe moving your head down as if you were looking down, perhaps moving your head side to side, right to left, but only very slowly and very gently. force anything, it has to be very, very gentle, just so you can be more in touch with the feelings, with the sensations, the physical sensations of how the back of your neck feels right now. And as we now focus on the tops of your eyes, the parts of your biceps, side, between your elbow and your shoulders, as you focus on those parts, the tops of your arms, and then I'd like to just tense them, but very, very gently. in any pressure whatsoever on your arms, it's just so that you can gain more of a sense of how your upper arms are feeling in this moment. noticing as you gently, very gently and slowly tighten the muscles in your neck bone. Notice stomach, the area, the lower abdomen area below your belly button, moving all the way down to your hips, just above your groin. Maybe you are able to tense these muscles difficult thing to do, then maybe you can just move your body, pushing your stomach up, maybe moving a little bit to the side, using your hips, just so that you can get more in tune with how your
physical sensations of the lower abdomen. And move the attention Noticing how your tongue and your mouth feels, and it may help by moving your tongue around your mouth, moving to the left with your crescent gently against the side. up against the, the top of your mouth and then down gently against the bottom of your mouth. Always very slowly and very, very gently. sensations that you are currently experiencing in your wrists, perhaps moving your hands up and down, again very, very. 
Christ in our name it doesn't include the science of the public as far as whatsoever very much is given if there's muscles or some neurons in it you're a hip area and I think to a buttock physically able to do so maybe you can fairly check just move your body ever so slightly very slowly from side to side just enough physical sensations in your lower back as you now move your attention So gently open your mouth, not wide but not stretching, just very gently long, slowly open your mouth and close your mouth. 
Everything starts to slow down. Including the thoughts in your mind and your mind itself just starts to gradually it doesn't have to be instant, but just gradually starting to, it's almost like time is stretching. It's a slower pace to maybe what you're used to in your day-to-day -day life. It's a slower movement of energy. Very small movements which make up the larger movements is always the case and when you move your hand it might seem like it's one movement but it's lots of minute different muscles moving in accordance with each other and what happens in this space that we're sharing is we move from that big movement into those smaller movements starting to focus on how your body feels, not just as a whole, not just, oh, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling stressed or tense or I'm feeling relaxed and calm, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling that way, but starting to notice that your body 
begins to present to you small feelings around your body. Small physical sensations. pleasurable or not. And maybe resisting the temptation to label them or to judge them, those feelings, and just thinking them, thinking about them as just being neutral, just feelings. being particularly concerned but just noticing what your body is telling you the feelings in your arms instead of feeling the whole of the arm maybe notice those individual feelings, all those different muscles and the skin, the hairs of your arms, the all the internal parts of your arms, the veins. Just being aware of maybe your elbow on your right arm has a certain feeling. Maybe your left wrist also has its own individual physical sensation. forearm and your right arm. Your right forearm there may not be any particular feeling that you could even give a name to. It may not feel like anything other than just a feeling, you know, it's there. The feelings in your shoulders. Perhaps your shoulders, when you think about them, kind of almost like they're the same, you know, the same feeling. Almost like your both of your shoulders are just one thing. Of course they're not. And when you focus on your left shoulder and then on your right shoulder, maybe you find that you move the muscles a little bit, maybe you tense the muscles gently. Noticing the difference in each shoulder. Your lower back. side of your lower back and the right side of your lower back. Of course, 
establish that connection to your buttocks and to your hips. And also moving up into the middle of the back. sometimes, like right now actually, when I focus on that part, when I focused on my buttocks, and when I focused on my, the middle of my back, it almost felt like the muscles in my lower back were being stretched, very gently, just stretched a little bit. Even though I wasn't doing anything to try to stretch the lower back, it just seemed to happen. The feeling of very gently stretching the lower back. along and it feels in your chest just noticing what sensations you Experiencing in your chest right now. And there's so much of the chest. Obviously, there's the collarbone leading to your chest, got the chest bone, you've got the muscles chest. Of course, if you're female, there's possibly the breasts. If you're male, you've got the different, I might not know different these days, but there may be more muscles at the top of the chest. But at the side and underneath, pretty much the same, whether you're a man or a woman, there's muscles there, muscles that stretch out to your back, as well as breast tissue which stretches and moves into your back. So just being aware of your chest. feeling there is in your chest. You will notice that I focus on my chest. I feel it in my my back, my upper back. I guess the obvious reason would be because when I'm breathing, in, then it stretches my chest and my back at the same time. And it feels, it feels okay. A little bit of pain in my right chest. A little bit, not pain, but a little discomfort, maybe stiffness, possibly. 
I don't know. Notice my shoulders are also wanting to flex for some reason. I think that's probably part of my upper back. connection between my shoulders and my upper back so I can move my shoulders and stretch the muscles in my back moving the shoulders backwards or up which then moves the I think it's the scapulas in the back Looks quite nice actually. The good thing about this is you can, if you want to, you can just flex or stimulate the various muscles in your body gently to get more of a sense of how they feel. And when you're relaxing, and you do tense a muscle, and then you let it go, and you let it relax, it relaxes. to do that at any point doing it if there's a uh, an issue with a per part of your body you need to be gentle with yourself at all times when you're relaxing deeply and something that you turn As you notice your mind, how much has your mind slowed down since we started this recording? Peaceful is your mind right now. With nothing to think about and just my voice to listen to because you know the intention behind this recording is relaxation. At the very least, for you to feel more relaxed at the end of the recording than you did at the beginning. At the very least, for your mind to slow down, as your body that's what you want to happen. That's what you expect to happen. For relaxation. your 
body. Maybe calm your mind to the point of boredom. When you start maybe to drift. as if you are moving further away from the body and the mind, just leaving that there. Kind of like in a, an escape pod in a spaceship, a movie, a space movie, you know, and get into that little pod and it sends them <laughs> far away from the spaceship. Focusing on the feeling of those individual parts of your body that are relaxing one by one. listening to my voice because your mind started to imagine something different maybe started to almost move into some kind of a dreaming dream state Even though you may want 
peace and comfort and safety. As you
physical sensation. Most like there's a magnet outside of your head sucking the tension and the stress and all your remaining feelings that you don't want. Sucking it out through your skull. Just emptiness, but space. A place full of fresh air. A place where you can stretch. It's almost as if as you go down to four and three, your mind is expanding with this sense of peace and tranquility, growth, so when you down to two, when you get to one, your mind just feels exactly how you want it to feel. sensation that you'd like to keep, a place that's safe where nothing can affect you at all. stay in that that space of comfort and confidence confident in your own ability to create this space and this feeling of comfort within your own mind just by counting from 10 down to 1 This is something that you can do yourself when you're on your own. A time when you can maybe sit down, maybe just for a few minutes. Close your eyes. Just count. feelings in your mind. And when you feel that way in your mind, your body copies your mind. And that feeling is spread through your spine system into every part of your body, travels through your bloodstream, healing and relaxing every part of your little existence. this several times before the end of the recording and then you can practice on your own and each time you count from ten down to one the feelings of comfort calmness and 
positive particles are spread throughout your body relaxing you so quickly relaxing your whole body and mind so many many years ago just repeat to yourself ten just notice be aware of how you feel in your mind and your body and when I say mind you can repeat yourself enough again noticing the increase and contracting the calmness in your mind and in your body just saying to yourself Seven, six, when I say five, four, when I say three, two, and lastly, when I say one. when you do this on your own without listening to me you can say the numbers at whatever speed that you feel is necessary for you so you can adapt if you feel you want to say the numbers then I do then go ahead and do that or if you feel you want to do it yourself then you can have to have more more space between the numbers maybe take a lot longer to get from 10 your choice also to do and when you count from 10 down to 1 and when I get to 1 I will be the end of this recording unless of course you're listening with music and the music will continue
the sin how you physically feel having things down in plenty for one allowing stress and tension to leave through your fingertips and your back pillows and as you focus on your fingertips maybe they feel a little bit tingly which is understanding if this is where your tension and feeling exiting in your body and through your fingertips. So now we're going to plant the point again to the Anagraha. This time you're going to feel relief of tension and stress and the anxiety that you might have. stomach, almost as if it's just releasing the whole of your stomach from the navel to just above your chest or below your chest rather, so you're surrounding your body by area in the whole area, you can feel the tension of your body, whatever's left just releasing. Notice that your stomach has become very relaxed, as point one and plenty come to you. Now, twenty, nineteen, eighteen, Focus, just do a little scan of your body. Just notice how your body feels. Focusing on your upper body, your back, your chest, stomach, legs, arms, hands, feet. Just noticing. you can 
to a point where eyes and this focus is on me. My thought and judgment runs something along the effects of that. Almost as if you were laying in knives, you know, like a like a battle of knives or something. Or kind of <laughs> Zorro or something. You know the kind of knife that covers your eye but also covers quite a lot of your forehead. focusing in that one area because that's the area that you know is going to release tension or stress from your mind from your brain or from your mind or any tension that you may have had with an area in your face in your neck in your jaw in your eyes in your forehead and then you stop you don't see any tension within your head anymore within your mind everywhere and that's going to be released through your forehead and your eyes and you count down again from 20 down to 1 1 20 19 Just in your head and neck and your mind and also in the parts of your body. And you can stay loose and calm like that. Nothing easy about it. At least it does not feel
Physically and mentally calm and in flow. Health and strength and mind flow. Feel so nice to just let go. To give yourself some space. Concerns about things that you don't need to think about. Nothing. Because this is your plan to let go. This is your space and your feeling with pure minds. Peaceful minds. Thank you.
disappear in the evening as you long to keep still but find absolutely no absolutely no light and I'd like you to make up your mind explore that with you, what it feels like when you actually decide that you're going to relax, not forcing yourself, but giving yourself that, I guess it is a command really, isn't it, when I'm telling myself, relax, so you gently but firm know that only someone else saying to you at the moment, relax, relax, you know, um, and this is gentle, but you can't, someone else can't really have the same, the same kind of influence or power that you have over your own physicality. Test it out. You can do a little test, a few little tests along the way, and you can get more of an idea of the force, the positive force that you can have in creating a sense of comfort and relaxation in your body and your mind. How quickly, just by you telling yourself. start by, let's, let's focus on your hands. So focus on your hands and just tell your hands to relax. So just say, relax, as you focus on your hands. You could say, my hands are relaxed, or I want my hands to relax. But I think if you actually do it directly, Focusing and imagining that your hands can hear it whisper right now, like they've got little ears or some kind of little mouth. So talking to your hands, you just say, relax. Noticing. Focus on your eyes and tell your eyes to relax. So you're just saying the same word, relax. Now find the right tone for you. So now I might say, relax. So you, you might say, relax. Or, relax. Or, you know, and you, you might say it differently to yourself. That's important for you to gauge what feels right for you. So just tell your eyes to relax whilst focusing on your eyes, your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyebrows, and just tell your eyes directly, relax.
Sometimes you may feel that you need a bit more time for the different tasks and maths and I just don't feel combined and maybe my part hasn't been as fully. But what would happen is that you just might feel like you're running at seven bells right now. And that's happening with my arms. Something else I noticed is when I started focusing more on this, I actually almost became, it got worse before it got better, in a way. Sort of, I felt a degree of tension growing in my arms and then disappearing. So I think what that was really was just me becoming more aware of the tension that was already there that I wasn't, I was focusing on it before. Acknowledging it or um, really conscious to those feelings. And my arms are still continuing to relax as well as my hands actually. My hands have got a certain kind of Like not buzzing, but a kind of feeling a degree of energy in my hands. Maybe that's where the tension is being released. Maybe that's strengthening it. The next part, I think, is the focus on the back of the neck. That's a part that's quite often for me held as tension I don't know about for yourself but I think it's quite a, a standard place where tension is sometimes held so and I'm, I'm doing it exactly what you're doing as you do it as well so I'm telling my body parts to relax as well so if you tell your neck the back of your neck to focus on the back of your neck and let yourself internally but you're focusing and you're saying it literally to the back of your neck as if the back of your neck is connected to what you're saying if you do that then let yourself relax to the back of your neck and then give yourself a breath on the back of your neck other parts start to I don't know, show themselves to me or maybe I don't want to be rude to the ground but I started noticing the feelings in my shoulder the tension in my shoulders and in my upper back whether that was because saying I'm putting that tension up or it's the other parts that are holding tension but in a way if my, my back of my neck is still relaxing then I just become more aware of other parts that need that, that tension and this might have happened and it's not doesn't mean that it's going wrong, it just means you're being 
Let's try to look how six the inside of the two bars. So I'm gonna focus on the upper bar. So if we do the same, even if we don't have any feeling of how it feels or how it feels on the upper bar we just focus on the bar color the whole area from the shoulder blades down to the middle of the back and the spine and the ribs and the head and the eyes Focusing on the bar color now, the upper bar is going to be the part that squares the mood of the character. As soon as I started talking, I knew about the upper bar and different bar colors that you wanted to add to the upper bar to look. The upper bar is already started. as if it doesn't need to be the words, it just needs the tension. It just needs to be noticed. That is something that often happens in this type of situation. Side of this technique is going to be sewing from its own mirror to the start and the center. Other parts of the body start with this position. I suppose it's kind of like a bit of an avalanche, you know. The little ball starts rolling. on the shoulder Like before, there's two shoulders, and you you. Can 
notice how how you feel generally how your body feels it's not necessarily even about breaking down or dysfunction or it's that space There's that gap of calmness, discomfort, relaxation. It's a nice feeling. So I'm going to count again as we come down to the end and notice that gap in the yard line of that yard yard line is almost like the the stress or the tension falls into the gap.
living in the most holy place. Would you take time to rest and to even let your heart sink to your soul?